how to purge natural gas. My name's Alan Hart and today I'm at Viva Training Academy and Russ, the, the trainer here, is gonna, going to show us a, a really basic video on how to purge a gas installation. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna be doing your acts or you're gonna train to be a gas engineer, etc., uh, this is gonna be a really basic video just, to, just so you can understand what you're doing when you're purging. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go over to Russ now. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please check and confirm with the current regulations. Thanks again, Alan. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to try and look at, uh, well, we're going to look at purging. We always purge after we've tightness tested. That's what the book says. If you can't purge, any appliances must be disconnected. You can't leave an uncommissioned appliance on a system. So purging always follows on from the tightness testing, whatever your tightness testing, low pressure, medium pressure, whatever. Once you've done your tightness testing, you're happy, you must recommission that system. Initially, the purge must be done under control. Obviously, you need to be sure what you're doing. In other words, you can't release gas into the atmosphere unless you're actually in control of that gas. Where do you purge from? That's always a debatable point. Invariably, as we're going to do today, we're going to use the cooker. If possible, use the cooker, mainly because it's accessible and it's easy to ventilate the room it's in, usually anyway. If you can't do that, then you may have to break into a gas way somewhere. As long as you know where you've broken into it and you can ventilate and clear it eventually and retest that joint afterwards, that's quite okay, but you must be in control of that gas. The older ideas used to be uh, just to turn the gas on, uh, op open a gas way, go back to the meter and check the reading on the meter and watch the gas go through the meter. That changed quite a few years ago because you don't have control. You don't know what's happening at the purge point. You may be at the front of the property and the purge point's at the back. You need to have control. If you talk to most engineers, they'll tell you, well, I don't do that anyway, I don't measure it, I don't do this. I just turn it on and light it. Nothing wrong in some ways because, believe it or not, the rules have changed slightly now. Although we still measure it, that is the perceived uh, procedure now. And to put a naked flame or whatever to the, as they word it, the issuing gas air mixture. But that's only up to a certain volume. That's up to 20 decimeters cubed or 20 litres of gas, or if you like the other measurement, 0 0.02 of a metre cubed. Once you get above that volume, the, it's still important to check what volumes we've put through. Now, if you remember uh, from earlier, and the books you've read, hopefully read by now for the trainees, on an E6 metre, you were looking to purge uh, 10 decimeters cubed of gas in, not in two minutes, in the time it takes to purge it. What we do is we turn on the gas after the test, we go to wherever we're gonna release the gas, you turn the gas on, wait a few seconds, ideally with something, either a lighter or whatever, so should it light, that's correct, you can stop the purge there and then, but if you're not too sure it's not lighting, turn it back off, you have control then. Go back to your meter, see how much gas you've passed. And if you've only passed half of the, half of the 10 litres, 10 decimeters cubed, you can go, and go back to your appliance, open it again and carry on. Once that gas is lit, whether you've passed 10 decimeters or not, that is the purge complete as far as you're concerned. You can then do the same procedure on every appliance. It only changes when you get above, above 20 decimeters, i.e. U16 meter for instance, that's already almost that to start with. On a, de on a 20 decimeter plus system, the volume now becomes much more important. Yes, you're gonna turn it on, Yes, you're going to put a, a means of ignition there, so if it does light quickly, all to the good. But if, you, if it does light, 
on a big system, you still need to go back to that meter and make sure you run the full 10 decimeters cubed through. Mainly because the meter is your danger point. The meter is the bit in the system, is the only section of that system where you've got a possibility of having a high volume of gas and air mixed together. If it's a brand new meter, you've got empty, it's full of air. You're going to put gas into there. At some point, at some point, you're going to have a nice, perfect air-gas mixture. That's why as long as the gas is on and pushing it, it's quite safe, because it's moving it away from the uh, potential. You need to get the meter safe. Now, depending on who you speak to, again, I'll say this every time you, I, you get me on these presentations, different publications word it slightly differently. The, the end result is the same, but the wording. When I was training, a lot of years ago now, when I was training, two of my instructors, absolutely excellent engineers, one of them always said it was five revolutions of the meter. Four, in, four for the meter, one for the pipe work. Another excellent trainer said it was five revolutions for the meter, four for the measuring compartments and one for the top of the meter. The principle's the same, that meter is now full of gas. Once it's full of gas, it's safe. What we have here is a, a G4 meter, as it says there, and we're looking at these three numbers here for the purge. They're decimeters. In other words, uh, 1,000 decimeters would then be one meter cubed. A decimeter is effectively the same volume as a litre. 1,000 decimeters to a meter cubed. This is showing on here one nine, effectively 195, we'll say 195. The purge will be 205. When we've passed 10 decimeters, it will be 205. That's the volume we're looking to pass. If on a small system like this, it lights before that, that's fine. The idea behind that is at least then you're not releasing more gas into the atmosphere than you need to. As I mentioned before, on a larger meter, it's very important that you do the full purge or close to because you really do need to make this safe. You need to make the meter safe. So initially now we're going to go to the appliance, we're going to turn the appliance on, train to light it and watch that for 195 and then perhaps in about 20-30 seconds come back and check what that's reading. Okay, we've, as you've just seen, uh, we've just set the uh, meter, we've read the meter at one, uh, 295, I think it was, 195, I apologise. We're now going to turn the gas on, but come back to the appliance. One thing you need to remember is, up to a U6 meter, the purge volume, an up to 28 millimeter pipe, will normally be 10 decimeters cubed, normally. Whatever size the installation, that's why, they now suggest that you put a means of ignition at the, as they word it, the issuing gas air mixture. Because this purge works for both small installations and bigger installations. So a small installation, let's say 10 foot of 15, 3 metres of 15 mil pipe, for 10 foot for the old ones, 10, 3 metres of 15 mil pipe will purge much quicker than 20 metres of 22 mil pipe. And that's the reason why it's, uh, it's a variation, as soon as it's lit, you can stop purging. Once you get onto bigger meters, U, uh, U10s, uh, U16s, etc., I think it's G10 actually, but it's the same thing, you stop, you're also invariably then going onto bigger pipe work, 28 mil, 35 mil is the maximum we can go up to. You've then got to start working out the volume of the gas to be able to work out the purge volume to pass through it. That's why it's more important you've passed enough gas on a larger installation than it is on a smaller installation because you need more gas to fill it up. The chart itself is in all the publications. I will show you one later uh, where they get the information from. Quite simple to, to look at. The first line goes up to 28 mil. I think it says up to and including 28 mil. And that would normally be a 10 decimeters cubed. Over that, you need to work out the volume of the pipe, 
get the volume of the meter from the chart, add them together, and you multiply. That's not strictly true, I apologise. Get the meter, get the pipe work, and multiply that volume of the pipe by 1.5, and that gives you your uh, purge volume. Normally, quite a lot more than the standard U6 meter. That's why it's also important where you're releasing it. Don't forget, when you're releasing that gas, you're in charge. You've got to be aware, if there's somebody else in that property, let them know what you're doing. You don't want somebody walking in with a cigarette, for example. Anybody coming through the door, you've got to be on that, ready for seeing anybody arriving, to stop them either coming in, or make sure they're not coming in and causing any problems, turning lights on even, that type of thing, turning switches. You are in charge, you are ultimately responsible. Don't take it as a heavy, but take it as a, as a, as a sensible movement. All we need to do now is literally, we've already set the meter, we've turned the gas on, come to your appliance, turn it on. Literally turn the gas on, wait a few seconds there. In this particular case, I'm going to use the blow lamp, just to light it. I'm just keep checking against it to see if it's going to there now. Find that one will work and turn it on. There we go. That's just proving the point that we do have the gas through. At that point now we're happy with that, it's burning steady. We can turn it back off. And we can now go back to check the meter reading. Okay, as you can see from the meter, we, we turn the cooker on, we let the gas pass through, we kept checking to see if it would ignite. Once it had ignited, give it a few seconds just to settle down properly, make sure it was a nice strong flame. We turned it back off, we've come back to the meter, and we can see we've actually passed seven decimeters of gas. If you said that were 195, that's on 202 now, so that's seven decimeters. We said it had to be within 10, up to 10 decimeters, so that's lovely, that's perfect, that's nicely inside the limit uh, without releasing gas for no, for no reason. Once we've done and checked the volume of gas that's gone through, we can then return to the appliance, perhaps relight it again, check, but of course we're recommissioning this appliance, remember. So it doesn't matter whether you installed it or not, you are now responsible for its safety. So part of that purge is make sure all the other sections of the appliance are working, the grill, the burner, all the, co all the safety controls, the thermostats, the flame sensing devices, etc., all operating correctly then you can move on to the next appliance and any other appliances the people may have in their property. Only when you've checked every appliance and relit it is that purge and recommission completed. I mentioned earlier about the uh, purge, when we mentioned about purging and going to the other appliances. Don't forget, you don't need to measure the gas again. Once you've done one appliance, that's made the meter and the initial part of the pipe work safe. You just need to as we call it, drag the gas through to the other appliances. When we measured the gas initially, uh, there's also that sort of a, you never know how long it will take to get that gas to the appliance, how long it will take to actually get enough gas through. A cooker doesn't use that much gas, so it can take longer than say a boiler. Boiler's difficult though, because it has an ignition sequence and quite often won't go through the system until there's gas there. So it's a bit of a balancing act, is that one. I mentioned earlier where do you get your information from. I'm looking in this particular training manual, and, it, uh, and we'll be a close up of this afterwards, uh, but it shows you sort of the, uh, uh, what volumes to expect, that's your testing actually, come back down here to purging. U6, G4, E6, up to and including 28 mil, 10 decimeters, as I mentioned earlier. Then below that, uh, even though it's still U6, G4, all the lot basically, but if you go on to bigger pipe work, over 28 mil, over 28 mil, it's then 1.5 times the installation volume. 1.5 times the installation volume. Where would you get that from? Go over the page, and it gives you, on most of all the publications now, I'll give you this chart. On the pipe sizes you're allowed to use, 15 up to 35 mil, it gives you the volume per metre run, or as they'll sometimes call it, per linear length, basically per metre length. And also at the bottom you've got the metre itself, so a, G, a G4 or a U6 has 8 decimetres cubed of gas in it, 
So you'd add that to the volume as well. And that would then give you your purge volume. That's why if you were U16, for example, there's 25 uh, decimeters of gas in that alone, plus the pipe work, plus multiplied by 1.5, you can see it's quite a lot of gas you need to pass. Uh, so just be aware of that one. Uh, and other than I mentioned or not, when you do do, the, do do the other appliances, there's no requirement then to go back to the meter and keep reading the 10 decimeters. That's just the initial purge to get the pipe work and the meter safe. After that, you can just pull it through to each appliance. Okay. Thanks for your time on that one. I'll hand you back over to Alan. Thank you very much for that, Russ. Um, so that was purging. Very basic video on how to purge. As Russ said, the volumes are in the book. So it's simple, simple to do. And on the smaller systems, the chart is in there. So you can just see what, what the volumes need to be. If you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments below. And if you are on in the training group, then um, if you've got any ideas for any other videos that you would like then please just ask and if we can you know we'll try and do whatever we can to help you really we've also got um, a medium pressure video coming shortly that's um, we're going to show how to do a let by on a medium pressure meter and also how to do a tightness test as well on a medium pressure meter so if you've got any questions on medium pressure meters then again please ask in this video and we'll try as best add them into into the into that video um yeah um that's about it for today thank you thank you very much and thanks for watching